Now, over the past few years, I've helped countless models generate over $10 million on OnlyFans, and thousands of guys start their own OnlyFans agency and scale it to multiple five figures, and even in some scenarios, six figures per month. So I've seen a lot of the mistakes that beginner agency owners make, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking you through three key mistakes to avoid as a new OnlyFans management agency owner. OnlyFans management is by far the easiest business model of 2024, but there are better and worse ways to go about starting and getting scaled up. As always, please leave a like on this video. It's super, super helpful and really motivates me to create more for you guys. I know you're probably sick of hearing it on every YouTube video. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, but if on this occasion you really could, that would be massively, massively helpful. Now, with that being said, let's get into point one. And this is a huge one. This is wasting too much time on the setup stage of your agency. Now, creating your logo, color scheme, social media accounts, initial posts on those social media accounts, that should really only take you a couple of days tops, okay? It really could take you an hour if you just wanted to bang through it. You know, our logo is a glowing circle. It really does not matter. A lot of the time, the first model you take on might actually even be someone that you know in real life. So they won't care about your logo, branding, whatever at all. And most of you watching this already have an Instagram account, which is more than sufficient to start outreaching potential models. As a matter of fact, a lot of the students inside Aura actually managed to sign their first model without an Instagram account or a website. So instead of spending years deciding what color scheme you're going to use, you should instead focus on three things before you get started. So the first is a pretty brief understanding of the OnlyFans platform as a whole so how do people sub why do they sub you know how can you make money within the messages some of the real real basics which is covered in a lot of the other videos on my channel the next thing is software such as zoom and calendly and a document signing software all of this is going to be crucial when you have that first call with a model and you can essentially get them signed to your agency now just something to note with zoom on the standard version of zoom which you actually don't even need to pay for you actually get half an hour of meeting then it will cut off that's usually more than sufficient so a lot of these softwares you don't even have to pay for okay when you're getting these softwares don't always you know be convinced to buy the pro package or by the business package because often you really don't need it at all and it's just an unnecessary expense for when you start your agency. And the last little thing, if you are going to be using your personal Instagram, please do clean that up. Don't have any crazy pictures of you on mad nights out or anything like that. Obviously, you need to be giving across a professional vibe when you're doing your outreaching as well. Now, over time, obviously, you can reinvest back into your branding, you know, maybe hire somebody to complete your website for you. If you join Aura, we actually give you a website for free, which can be really, really helpful when you're starting out so you don't even have to worry about it. But yeah, don't waste too much time on the website initially. And the best thing about gaining more experience is that when you're creating the content, you're actually talking from personal experience, which is gonna make the content even more valuable and just all around better. So mistake number one is spending too much time on the setup. Get the basic necessities for your agency ready and get to the outreach stage because only in the outreach stage and signing your first client is when you're going to make too much money. Don't do any of this kind of mental masturbation is what is what is referred to often. Just get on with it. So yeah, get the basic necessities sorted. Get to the outreach stage as quickly as possible because only in the outreach stage are you going to sign your first client and start making money. And you need to get to this point as quickly as possible. Mistake number two as a total beginner is hiring a chatter as soon as you take on your first client. Now, obviously, there's nothing stopping you from doing this and you feel like it's going to be the best decision for you. Maybe you know somebody who's already an experienced chatter, then maybe. But in reality, if you're taking on your first model, even if it's just for a week, I'd recommend doing the chatting yourself to learn how to navigate the OnlyFans account, test out some of the scripts, see what works so that you can then identify with any issues that your chatters you take on further down the line might have. Another massive reason for this as well is because when you're doing the chatting yourself, invariably, you're going to do it really, really well because obviously you're seeing the money come into your own pocket in real time. And for a lot of people watching this, this is probably going to be their first experience of making money online. And honestly, the feeling is crazy. You know what that means? That means your model's going to be happy, at least in the first couple of weeks initial period. If you're doing the chatting, you're putting in a really, really good shift, making lots of money. She's seeing a big improvement. Obviously, because you're doing it, there's going to be no grammar mistakes, no spelling mistakes, no punctuation errors, you know, the model is going to be best pleased as well, which means that when you have the chatters take over a couple of weeks in, even if the chatters do make a couple of little mistakes here and there, the model will probably be quite forgiving and quite allowing of it because she's already had a great experience from the off. It's all about setting the tone straight away. Obviously, when the chatting is getting too much to handle, or maybe you've done it for a week or so and you want to get it off boarded, that is going to be the time when you start hiring chatters or maybe even use a chatting agency. However, a lot of chatting agencies that you'll come across will only probably take you on if the model's doing a minimum of 10k per month and that is just so that their margins can actually work and it's worthwhile for that. So far then don't take too long during the setup phase just motor through all that and get onto outreach as soon as possible and secondly do the chatting yourself for around a week or so minimum just to understand how the chatting actually works and how you can 
and make money on the OnlyFans account. Now, the third thing is going to be building up a really great relationship from your models from the first closing call. Now, when you take the closing call, there needs to be a huge emphasis on actually building the relationship with that model from day one. Minimum, the first 10 to 15 minutes of that call should just be you finding a little bit about them. You know, what are their interests? Where are they from? Et cetera, et cetera. This will make the model feel at ease from the word go and probably massively increase the chance of you actually signing them. Now, of course, this extends beyond just signing the model on. This extends to your entirety of working together. You need to always have a really great and friendly relationship. What you have to bear in mind is that with this business model, if either party isn't working to their fullest effort, it's not going to work. You know, you need the model to produce content. They need you to be doing the account management and the promotion. And if there's any sort of bad feeling between you and the model, the partnership breaks down pretty quickly. Now, look, I'm not saying you have to make a new best friend or anything like that, but I'm just saying have a couple of calls a week, drop a couple of text messages to check in, see how they're doing. If you know they've got something on, you know, show an interest. You actually want to be building a relationship with these clients because you're going to be working with them for a very, very long time. Now, when it comes to any disputes with clients, having a good relationship with them is going to be a lot easier as well. So they're not going to be quite as frustrated if they see you make a mistake and vice versa. Now, something massive that I just want to address, and this is once again, something I see happening a lot. If you ever have any kind of disagreements or arguments with your models, with your clients, you always want to speak to them on a call. Do not make the mistake of going back and forth on text messages where, you know, messages can be misconstrued or misread. It's really, really important that you always jump on a call and it's going to be the easiest way to sort out any differences that you have. Even I've had scenarios in the past where a model has been frustrated. Maybe there was a, a mistake by one of the chatters on their account and they sent a very angry text message. But when you jump on a call and you explain kind of the reasons why the mistake happened and why it won't happen again, everything is absolutely fine. But if you just ping back a kind of an angry text because you're frustrated straight away, it's never going to end well. So please, any issues with the model whatsoever, jump on a call, talk it out. I'm actually going to give you a fourth bonus mistake that I see happen a lot. And this is something that I've addressed in a lot of recent coaching calls with the Aura students. And this is when you're sending your outreach messages, please, 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 please do not sound like a robot and don't send chunky paragraphs. Those are the two main outreach rules. Now to someone that's just started online business and has never had any experience with any of this, I do kind of understand, you know, why they may just formulate a massive paragraph talking about all the services they offer and how great they are, et cetera, and then hit send. In reality, you need to keep your outreach as conversational uh, as, po as possible. And I've talked about this on other YouTube videos. You know, you need to act as a doctor, find out where their pain points are, and then market yourself as the solution. But if you're sending massive paragraphs, you have absolutely no idea what situation they're in. It's very, very vague. It's very, very broad, and it's never gonna work. When you're sending these messages, try and include something specific about the model in the first message as well. Maybe it's an example of something that they posted recently, or maybe it's their name. It just shows the model that you've taken the time out of your day when you're doing your outreach to actually have a look into who they are and it's going to make them all the more likely to jump on a call with you. So yeah, it was meant to be three, but it turned into four massive mistakes that I see a lot of beginner OFM agency owners make. Now, if you want to skip all these mistakes and if you want to find out how I and Aura can help you, please do drop me a message on Instagram. It's at Harry Paul Davis. We've put everything together in a way where you will essentially make no mistakes and it's a very, very clear roadmap for you to have massive success within this industry. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.